Hallelujah. We're going to be studying the book of Ephesians. It's a Bible study, so please bring out something to write. There are some of you who, if you did not hear this girl's testimony, you will not bring out writing materials. Now you are bringing out your Bible. Say, I better write now. Don't be afraid of entering car or entering all of these things. If the satan if, if the devil drives my car I will still enter because he will take me safely i assure you he will take me safely he will not even know what came upon him but he will drive me safely see i've met armed robbers on the road i have seen demons it's just that god has said i won't die you don't know what i've gone through so don't you just say, I share you are enjoying. Where do you get? <laughs> When you become full of the word, you will be victorious. See, if you refuse to be full of the word, you will think we are acting this thing on stage. That's the problem. Those who don't invest in the word think he's just acting. They say it's not true, Jared. This person is just talking. When I tell you there is a realm that you can rise above sickness, there is a realm that you can rise above failure, there is a realm that you can rise above the oppressions of Satan, there is such a realm. And we are contending to enter that rest, but there is that rest. And the Bible says, let us therefore labor. This is where we are laboring, in the word, in prayer, so that we enter that rest. There is that rest hallelujah now the book of Ephesians um, it was written by Apostle Paul I just want to give you a little background the book of Ephesians theologically speaking it's it's been agreed among theologians and Bible scholars that the book of Ephesians contains one of the highest church truth do you understand it contains one of the the highest explanation it gives the most precise description of the believers work as far as um, our work in the kingdom is concerned Paul used the first uh, six chapters to explain uh, different areas of the Christian life hallelujah was written to the church in Ephesus helping them to understand the realities of the life I hope you understand that Paul uh, was not necessarily taught his revelations. I, I follow me now. He got it expressly by the Spirit. And so he got his revelation. And so he wrote this thing to the church. But he was not just supposed to stop with the efficient church. It was supposed to be spread around all the churches that he had planted. Because it contained certain truth that Paul had received from the Spirit. And we're going to be considering these things. Hallelujah broadly is divided into three the first three chapters of ephesians talk about our position in christ the realities what we call new creation realities it helps us to understand who we are on account of what christ has done for us so we are going to be examining that the first three chapters the book of ephesians attempts to discuss what we have become it contrasts who we were outside of christ and outside of the commonwealth of israel and then what the redemption of christ has brought to us as a believer hallelujah so at the end of studying the first three chapters of ephesians you are supposed to know who you are the whole concept of the plan of redemption what really happened we fell from grace what kind of grace so you get to understand the concept of grace and of redemption and the fact that for all have sinned the concept of righteousness and the walk the 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 the, the resting place hallelujah so it teaches you and reveals to you your position that you are seated with christ in heavenly places that's the summary of the first subdivision of the book of ephesians it teaches you how to walk in the reality of your position seated in christ hallelujah and then chapter four and five gets to discuss what we call the work of the believer 
it talks about conduct and character how you walk in the kingdom w-a-l-k it teaches you how to walk how you can live as a kingdom citizen begins to guide you on the principles that's where it begins to talk of spiritual living talking about living in the world living in character living conducting yourself such that you can be seen as a christian hallelujah and then chapter 6 teaches you how to stand hallelujah that's where a lot of ministries get the concept of warfare it teaches you how to stand in your position in christ against the wiles of the devil so it teaches you your position of rest in christ and then it teaches you how to walk and then it teaches you how to stand hallelujah tells you how to stand with all the armor that you have been equipped with the breastplate of righteousness the helmet of salvation your shoe girded about it tells you all of those things holding for the shield of faith wherewith you will quench all the fiery darts so we are going to be examining this at the end of this study you are supposed to come into that experiential position where you know who you are in christ you are aware you are convinced of the blessings and the benefits of redemption and then you know how to walk and to live as a christian now the entire book is very every time you are studying the book of ephesians it's important to study all the six chapters because when you study only one part of it you will have a, a misguided knowledge hallelujah if the bible tells us we have been seated in christ why does it teach us to stand against the wiles of the enemy again are you following me now if the bible tells us that we are seated in christ then why should it tell us again to still guard i mean you are seated with christ satan cannot come there the bible says he was judged out of heaven and there was no place for him again remember the book of revelations he said there was war in heaven lucifer that old serpent he was judged casted to the earth and there was no more place for him that's what jesus was speaking in luke when he said i beheld satan falling as lightning why as lightning because the angels move in that speed he said he make at his angels wind and his ministers flames of fire and so he was casted from the heavens because remember in the book of job the bible says when the sons of god gathered satan was in their midst i hope you realize that the bible was not written in chronological order that means in the order with which they happened if the bible was written in chronological order job would be before exodus are you listening to me so the bible was not arranged in chronological order the dispensation of job was called the dispensation of conscience because we do not see the manifestations of the law there hallelujah the progression of the dealings of god with man is that from the garden of eden right from the garden of eden when man fell the word of god reveals to us that god had known i hope you realize that god immediately man fell it was revealed in the garden there that the redemption of man will be the ultimate uh, solution through the shed blood of jesus christ because the bible says that god killed a lamb and used it to cover what adam and eve that was a type of the substitutionary work of jesus it was a prophetic type of the atonement shown in the garden there are you listening to me and now adam adam was the first man god created after the judgment listen to me not the first man that was created in eternities adam is not the first man who was created from forever no adam was the first man created after the fall of lucifer genesis chapter 1 verse 1 we're doing bible study the bible says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth then verse 2 says now the earth was dark and void and formless comes from two hebrew words tohu bohu all of them all these greek words they mean confusion and chaos darkness every time the bible talks about darkness there are three words one ignorance two confusion three the manifestation of the workings of the flesh so every time you study the bible and it talks about darkness it's talking about confusion it's talking about ignorance every time the bible talks of light it doesn't just talk of the presence of god it talks of illumination 
and god said let there be light that light was not sunlight because a few verses later the bible says god made many lights so what lights did he say let there be hallelujah so let's establish the fact that Abba, adam was not the first man on the earth he was the first man created in the image and the likeness of god why because i needed to understand that between genesis 1 verse 1 and genesis 1 verse 2 were many many years are you listening to me it didn't just happen the way the bible summarized it 28 that's where the bible gives us a description of the one we know as satan today the one we call lucifer i hope you know lucifer was once an archangel lucifer was the archangel in charge of worship just like michael being the archangel in charge of war every time the bible talks of the manifestation of war and standing in for the saints the archangel that is sent is michael and every time there is an activity that requires service delivering a message is who gabriel that's why when daniel was praying daniel said he began to pray and for three weeks he was praying and gabriel was bringing him a message but the prince that was surrounding the territory of persia because the bible tells us that the it gives us the the the, the arrangement the strategic arrangement of what we want to call the satanic kingdom hallelujah it says we do not our, our, our wrestle is not against flesh and blood but against what principalities and powers and rulers and then he talks of some that do not function in the earth realm he calls them spiritual wickedness in heavenly places these are the ones that are in charge of territories and now this spiritual wickedness was in charge of persia because daniel and the other people were caught in the babylonian captivity at that time and so he, he began to seek the face of the lord hallelujah and when gabriel was bringing the reply the prince of persia stopped gabriel but gabriel is an archangel should he not fight no the angels do not break their ranks and so he kept praying until michael the archangel came hallelujah remember in the book of jude when the bible says some of you don't read your bible when there was struggle over the body of moses the bible says how that who michael was struggling he was supposed to take the body of moses and satan say it belongs to me and now michael could not fight there he said the lord because this was satan are you listening to me now the lord rebuke you are you still here so satan was cast and when he was cast I want you to understand according to scripture the bible says one third of the angels fell with him hallelujah imagine the kind of influence satan was the valued cherub the bible calls him there's no time sorry i would have gone in depth hallelujah he calls him the valued cherub that covereth his embodiment it was made of the objects of worship and he had access to the heavens and the earth i hope you know by that time the then heaven here was there was no blockage between the heavens and the earth there was free access and satan could walk upon the holy mount of god until iniquity was found in him what was the iniquity he said i will exalt myself and i will arise above the stars of god he wanted the position of god because he felt he could legislate and satan alongside all the other demons one of them being the demon spirits called leviathan how many of you have read about leviathan some of you don't read your bible only i i receive this it just makes you grounded and then the bible talks about the manifestation of satan again it talks of apollyon these were all of the of the angels that fell together with lucifer hallelujah and so when they fell you see flood in scripture is symbolic of judgment are you listening to me that was the judge it was the judgment of lucifer he's casting down from the heavens that led to the chaos of genesis 1 verse 2 do you understand now now the earth was dark void and then the bible when it was time to recreate the earth then elohim the father the son and the holy spirit the singular is eloha one of the trinity three of them or any once is more than one is elohim in the hebrew and elohim said light be 
in other words i withdrew you that light listen is the life giving dimension of god because when jesus manifested in the book of john the bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god he said he was with god in the beginning and through him was all things made and without him was nothing made that was made he said in him was what light and that light was the life of man so when he was saying let there be light he was releasing that factor that dimension of him that causes things to exist he said let there be light and he said there was light and he saw that it was good then he began to recreate the earth and then he made man from the dust of the earth i hope you know when he made man the word man there is adam adam is not just the name of adam are you listening to me in the hebrew adam is man dust the woman was inside the man when he pronounced the blessing that's why whether you're a woman or man you can walk in the reality of what the word of god says the separation happened in genesis chapter 2 when he caused man to sleep and he took out of that man the rib and created the woman hallelujah are you following me now so when you say women are weaker vessels based on what because when the blessing was being spoken to the man adam the woman was in the man are you listening to me now and so adam became the the first recreated man in the image and the likeness of god what is the image of god the image of god is not physical the likeness of god means two hands god has two hands not three the bible tells us there is a right hand meaning there is a left one are you listening to me you would have just said hand hallelujah you use scripture to compare scripture we call it systematic theology how you can use one scripture to explain and give light to another scripture and then you are you are unable to take just one aspect of scripture and create a doctrine out of it until you can find the same operation in both the old and the new testament because the bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses is a matter established are you following me now so one is the number of unity two is the number of witness are you listening to me when the bible says hear O israel the lord your god is one now hebrew is a very big word the only word that is close to hebrew is, that we can liken in nigeria is yoruba you can have many words do you understand for instance the word en in hebrew n it means what is at for so it depends on the context you need the holy ghost to be able to interpret some of these scriptures that's why those who interpreted the early translations of the bible misuse certain words like authority and power there are four words in scripture that are used to connote power one is called kratos one is called iskos one is called exousia the other one is called dunamis most people just know dunamis and exousia exousia is the outworking of the word every time you take in the word in your spirit what happens is there is a build up of what we call kratos the in walking of the word when you are full of the word what you release is the outworking exousia the power of atony you are so full of the word that now you can represent him and so when you take out time and pray in tongues the build up of that dimension in you is called iskos is the power the inner workings of the spirit when he said building up yourself on your most holy faith that's the build up so when you lay hands on the sick what you release is dunamis the power the ability of the spirit able to reproduce itself that's why you can lay hands on 100 people it's like fire you can use one candlestick to light many are you listening to me now where are we we've left the book of Ephesians are you learning something we want us to know the word of god and to appreciate the workings of the word so god created man let me tell you something about satan satan is a spirit one of the fallen angels now fallen are you listening to me he is falling see after me satan is falling there are certain attributes of satan i would want you to know even as we start number one satan is not omnipotent in fact let me put it this way there are three attributes that make god god all by himself number one he's omnipotent the word omni means all potent means ability all powerful omnipotent the, number two he is omniscient omniscient means all-knowing 
all knowing he knows all things number three he's omnipresent the psalmist said where can we hide from your presence omnipresent means he's everywhere whoever can possess these three attributes at any given time is called god whoever at any given time can be omnipotent omnipresent omniscient god this is what satan cannot be everywhere at the same time are you listening to me for instance he's not here are you listening to me so don't just sit in that fear and say hey, 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 is satan no satan is not everywhere he cannot be everywhere at the same time because when he went to god in the book of job god asked him he said ah from where are you coming he said what from going to and fro but you never hear god saying going through and through it's only his eyes that go through and fro he's called alpha omega the word and is an error in the translation it's not and omega alpha omega that means there is nothing called future in his presence everything lays bare it's not called alpha and omega alpha is the first of the hebrew letters omega is the is the last so it says he's the first and the last alpha omega hallelujah and so satan manifests with different spirits different manifestations of spirits hallelujah and there are many of them death is one of them death is not a phenomenon death is a spirit are you listening to me the bible says that there were four riders upon the horse in the book of revelation and he said one of them held a pair of balances and the name of that spirit is death so it's a spirit hell is a spirit for instance hell is not just a location i've told you hell is in the earth hell is right at the center of the earth hell lies in the shape of a man and enlarges itself every time the psalm is seeing this by revelation he said hell enlarge itself he said i will go down to the pit where they are warm diet not hallelujah i hope you know that jonah went to hell Jonah didn't just stay in the belly of the fish. Jonah went to hell. Jonah began to give descriptions of the gates and those in chains and in hell. So hell is a spirit. The Bible says that at the judgment when the sea will give up all those that died in it. Are you listening to me? And then he said hell will give up all those that died in it. He said hell death the last spirit that will be destroyed is death he said hell death and the grave will be cast into the lake of fire no man is in the lake of fire right now the lake of fire is part of god's kingdom he designed the lake of fire for the punishment of satan so all those that have died and gone to hell have not started the punishment it is when satan is officially taken to hell that their punishment will start reading because every time we, we call it in theology the doctrine of interpenetration how two people can become one that's the mystery of marriage wherefore shall a man leave his what father and mother and cleave to his wife and they two shall become what one that's how the bride and the spirit the church and the holy ghost became one he that is joined to christ is what one spirit now he that is joined to satan is also one spirit are you listening to me he that is joined to satan is one spirit So how does satan carry out all his activities he tries to mimic the operation of the trinity because the administrative structure of heaven is such that the father is always the initiator the word is the one who speaks things into be the holy spirit is the pentecostal arm of the trinity he's the one who makes things happen that's why in genesis chapter 1 verse 2 he was the first of the deity to be revealed and the spirit of god hovered round the face of the waters now satan also tries to mimic the operational organogram of heaven by trying to create what we know as 666 666 is not just something people will receive on their head and their hand 6666 is the number of a man are you listening to me one is the number of unity two is the number of witness three is the number of establishing a thing and then it's also the number of trinity four is the operation of the holy spirit five is the number of grace and mercy six is the number of a man seven is the number of perfection eight is the number of new beginnings 
are you following me now so 666 is satan trying to mimic the operation of god the first six stands for satan who wants to be the father himself the second six stands for the antichrist the antichrist is both a system and a person the antichrist government started at the birth of cain and cain departed from the presence of god and built a city naming it after his son enoch the same spirit of the antichrist followed nimrod and nimrod said let's build a city whose tower will reach the heaven the same spirit was upon nebuchadnezzar and he built babylon the same spirit was upon jezebel and ahas the same spirit was upon herod the same spirit was upon herod in the book of acts and the same spirit is what is explained in the book of revelation the mystery babylon so there is the antichrist as a system but there is the antichrist as a person and that person is the one who tries to mimic jesus when you read the book of revelation it tells us that the antichrist will not have anything to do with women because jesus did not marry the antichrist will die and he will come back to life power will be given to him the dragon will give him power and then the last six stands for the false prophets who stand trying to mimic the holy spirit why are there many because the holy spirit is the only holy spirit we have we don't have many we have him but because satan cannot be omnipresent so he uses many people your rap artists your your the, the touts around town they are all the manifestation of that spirit are you getting something So Satan is not a mystery. Satan is a person. He cannot be everywhere at the same time. Are you listening to me? And hear what I, I know why I'm talking to you about Satan because we are about to examine something briefly. Seated with Christ. The book of Ephesians. We are, we are taking the first chapters. When, when, you, when I read the chapters now, you will understand based on the foundations that I've laid. Now look at me please quickly. Let me explain something. What did man lose? I need to explain to you what man lost first and foremost please can i have someone a guy and then can i have someone help me with a veil please we are going to the garden of eden right now i'm not going to be a lady i'm not one of the stupid people in society who change themselves from men from men to women hallelujah now this is righteousness this is not a woman righteousness hallelujah now look look at me listen genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and elohim said let us make man in our own image are you listening to me and now the bible says that christ is the express image of god that means let us make man in christ are you listening to me that means let us look at the word and reproduce man out of the word the first adam was created the second adam was born unto us a child is given are you listening to me that's why he he was when jesus came to the earth listen to me he was the only son of the father when he resurrected after acts chapter 2 he became the first born of the begotten he's no longer the only son of the father what are you are you listening to me you are a son whether you are a lady the word son is not male figure the word son is weos and technon i've taught you this weos and technon technon means a child baby one who is void of knowledge but you are still son so the bible says as many as received him he gave them power to become sons are you listening to me so now this is adam listen adam was made in the image and the likeness of christ and authority was given to adam listen the condition to be able to walk with god is that you must have righteousness equal to that of jesus not less are you listening to me so god created man in the very righteousness of christ so god could come in the cool of the day and function with man but you know before man was created satan had already been casted so he was roaming around that's why he told him he said subdue the word subdue means there's an enemy roaming around are you listening to me now watch this satan comes in genesis chapter 3 and meets eve why eve because eve was the woman taken out of man the authority was given to man are you listening to me and satan came to eve in an attempt to tempt eve because adam loved eve i hope you realize that when eve was eating of the tree adam was not somewhere tilling the ground he was there with her 
so ladies don't let anybody tell you it's you that caused trouble why didn't he stop her adam was there she ate it and gave him what made him to eat it love 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 is still what is throwing people today love no, now follow this are you listening to me so satan listen satan's ultimate quest was not eve he needed to use eve to get adam so now the second adam comes as christ and the eve is now the church are you listening to me so satan still wants to take that authority but now he's attacking the eve of the second adam which is the church the body of christ that's why the bible calls us the bride of christ we are the bride of that second adam now he has righteousness satan comes and tells eve did god really say that in the day you eat of this tree you will die let me tell you satan's strategy every time satan comes to you the first thing he will do is to attack what god told you god announced over jesus this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased he goes to the wilderness after 40 days satan said if you are really the son of god didn't god just say it 40 days ago god said it satan said if it is true prove it just like satan looks at you and says if you are truly beautiful prove it and he said man shall not live by bread alone what is bread a uh, bread is what nourishes the body so man shall not live by sensory perceptions alone but by every rhema every word that comes from the mouth of the lord are you following me now we've not even started the teaching of Ephesians. this is just the background hallelujah now adam was created having this say righteousness now right everybody righteousness is the ability to stand in the father's presence righteousness is the ability to stand in the father's presence without a sense of guilt without a sense of inferiority and without a sense of condemnation the ability to stand in the father's presence when you were growing up and you stole meat when they got to know about it you you almost wanted to die when your father was coming back home because you've lost righteousness that ability to stand when your result is good you run home and you you can't wait for your father to come but when when it's not the way you hoped for it to be you'll be wishing that you would travel that's righteousness are you listening to me so adam had this anyone who did not have this righteousness cannot relate with god watch this so when man fell i hope you realize that man did not fall by eating the fruit eating the fruit was the proof that he had fallen because death is first spiritual before physical i hope you know adam did not die physically yet he lived many hundreds of years ago death was the natural consequence of the deterioration of the sin nature we'll talk about that i just want you to understand this concept first so when man fell watch what happened the first thing that happened is when they ate the bible says their eyes were what open look up there were two trees in the garden of eden one was called what one get your sunday school book one was called what some of you didn't even go to sunday school you were buying ice cream with or, 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 your offering and playing ball with oranges where your friends were receiving the word of the lord one is called the tree of life the other is called what now the tree of life the job of the tree of life is to make you live forever in whatever state you are in are you listening to me whatever state you are in you have to remain in the in that state if you eat of the tree of life so when god created man in his image eating of the tree of life will keep him in that state so by reproduction he will give birth to many children after his kind who are after the kind of god are you listening to me now the tree of the knowledge of good and evil exposes you to two things it opens your eyes truly to begin to be aware why good and evil adam did not know that that there was judgment upon satan he didn't know certain evils that happened before he came are you listening to me so satan did not really lie when he said you shall be like god you will know some things that have happened that there is more than you are seeing so when he came to him he, when he ate and eve ate what happened their eyes they had eaten listen everything you receive through satan will give you these two things good but with it will come a measure of evil 
knowledge of good and evil and the whole journey from genesis to revelation is everybody choosing whether he will eat between the knowledge of of the tree of life or of good and evil because in the book of revelations we see that there was a tree of life in the throne of god the other three had disappeared because everyone that made it must have chosen the tree of life so there is no more tree of the knowledge of good and evil are you following me please Their eyes were open. What happened? They suddenly realized they were naked. What covered them in the first place? Shekinah, the kabod of God. The literal glory of God. The way it covered the face of Moses, it covered the entire structure of them. So they did not even see their nakedness, but they were naked. Are you following me now? Now the glory lifted. And this is what they lost. Man lost three things when he fell. Number one, he lost the Holy Ghost the breath of life the one who will guide and instruct him number two he lost righteousness look at this this was lost so man the soul of man according to the tripartite nature of man i hope you know you are a spirit you live in a body and you have what a soul when we talk of soul what are we talking about it's just your spirit in the consciousness of your will emotions and intellect now watch this please man falls all right and suddenly he discovered look at the manifestations of the soul now his spirit died what is death separation from the spirit of god the spirit of god left man instantly he died he said in the day you eat of that tree you shall what die that means you shall be separated from my spirit at that point we see solical manifestations suddenly he was afraid suddenly he was timid and they went to hide and the bible says in genesis chapter 3 and he heard the voice of god walking in the cool of the day the literal hebrew rendition is and god and the talking spirit was walking in the cool of the day and he said adam where art thou and adam said i heard thy voice and i hid because i was what naked he said who told you that means everything you know today somebody told you whether it's right or wrong somebody told you and adam said what the woman he didn't say my wife again you see where family controversy started from he said the woman you gave me this woman i was minding my business you came come and produce something out of my reach. the woman and now he said woman why have you done this then listen certain curses began to come one of it was the cause of tilling the ground he said in your sweat shall you eat and to the woman he said the travail of childbirth are you listening to me and the ground was cursed and to the serpent i hope you know the serpent was one day we'll talk about that i'm not ready to say something now you are not okay no problem when we are talking about the war <laughs> the the standing i would tell you why is satan interested in snakes have you wondered why what is it about serpents and people the traditional people in your village people who have dreams and see snakes why not monkey why not why not goat we will explain that because you will find out that before the snake fell the serpent was not the serpent was not crawling the way it used to crawl hallelujah we are going to study the word we we'll examine a lot of controversial things for instance the bible tells us enoch the father of seth the father of adam the son of god or the son of seth the son of adam where did he leave cain and abel read your bible they were not among the genealogy ah then the bible says adam knew his wife and he gave birth to cain he didn't tell us he knew his wife again meaning he slept with his wife but we see abel manifesting the second time adam will know his wife they gave birth to seth and he said on that day men began again to call upon the name of the lord so were they twins sila the second question is where did cain get his wife from because cain was banished are you listening to me I will make you love your bible and then we'll examine again what really happened that suddenly look at me the bible says by their fruit we shall what how come cain and abel 
the bible never tells us that adam is the father of all the living but it tells us eve is the mother of all the living bible what are you saying don't confuse us here because now we see adam and we see, i mean we see cain and we see abel suddenly we see the manifestation of the workings of the spirit in the life of abel but we see the manifestation of satan in the life of abel and god told him hey to the point that cain will now kill his brother and god told him sin lieth at your door who taught him all these things i thought they were the first children of of adam and eve who taught them the concept of sin and the concept of falling who is the father of cain who is the father of abel who is really their father because this was the revelation paul was trying to give the people in romans chapter 7 he said within me although i came out from one womb the womb of the word of god i see the manifestation of two persons in me he said with my spirit i serve god however i turn and i see another law walking in my members so that the things that i want to do i do not find myself doing and the things that i don't want to do i find myself doing he said oh wretched man that i am who shall deliver me from this body of death then verse 8 chapter 8 verse 1 start he said there is therefore now no condemnation to a certain kind of people are you seeing the relevance don't think we're just bamboozing through history no 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 we're trying to check something because the bible says cain departed from the presence of god and built a city that's where the antichrist government started from it started from cain how did this happen didn't adam teach his children well could it be that cain had another father sila so man lost righteousness hallelujah when man lost, lost righteousness he ran away from god listen from that time i hope you realize that the law the prophets and all of these things were only interims do you know the law that the law was not part of god's original agenda for man you know the manifestation of the prophets of old the prophets of old paid both prophetic and apostolic roles because one of the proof of an apostle is that you must have an encounter with the lord jesus directly paul said am i not an apostle have i not seen jesus are ye not the seal of my apostleship are you listening to me now no man had at any time seen the word because until then the word had never found expression physically he was only the word are you listening to me now it was only when the holy spirit turned the word to become a seed and planted the bible says he appeared before men and they saw him he was full of grace and truth so until then no man ever knew how the word looked like his original name was not jesus i hope you know that jesus was the name he took when he bore when he had a body because when the prophet prophesied he said ye shall call him emmanuel emmanuel is a hebrew word that means god in our midst god with us jesus was never called emmanuel once is it was he called emmanuel in your bible they gave him jesus there are mexicans that bear jesus today jesus is simply the hebrew is jehoshua that's where you get joshua it means god our salvation that's where they get yeshua because they pronounce y for j yeshua that's why you see some versions they say hallelujah instead of yeah you see j hallelujah or hallelujah some people say hallelujah are, are you are you learning something please we're examining the book of ephesians and there are certain foundations that you must have so man left the presence of god when he left the presence of god what happened that began what we know today as experiment the holy spirit was supposed to lead man into perfection but now man had fallen are you listening to me so he had to now start using his mind and then wickedness began to grow and then later we are going to be studying how that the bible says that the sons of god slept with the daughters of men and they gave birth to certain kinds of things they corrupted the race men with six fingers and six toes unusually big that's where goliath came from so what happened when we study i'm going to show you from the bible the origin of hiv aids and you will know that hiv aids is called acquired immunodeficiency syndrome It's something that came from the interaction of the realm of the spirit and this realm 
that's why when it comes into you it attempts to change your dna it paralyzes your immune system the solution is not just medicine the solution is the power of god this is what is is taught in the film you know to be x-men that there are certain people by reason of genetic mutation acquired certain supernatural ability and then they say a war will happen one day on the earth that's the prediction of the films you watch and they are not lying that is the watch between the sons of light and the corrupt race some of the films you watch some of the pictures and the demons that they come from do you know they are real demons one day i saw the advert of a movie and i saw a you know all these kind of funny films i've seen that demon in the realm of the spirit and they used the mask of the demon in a real film i said what the heck the producers of these films are real men of the spirit don't you think they are just intellectuals they say he has phd whatever uh -uh. these men go by divination and sorcery and they have a covenant with satan and they come up with the pictorial representation of these demons for instance the way michael jackson dances is a, a, there is a, there are evil spirits that dance that exact way it is when they inhabited him that he started doing that it's not a lie this is true hmm. ephesians chapter one we're out of time the time has even gone don't go and sit maybe you want to go and sit okay go and sit i'll use somebody else paul an apostle of jesus christ by the will of god to the saints who are at ephesus and to the faithful in christ please take on your bible we are reading we're going to read um this is part one the book of ephesians part one grace be unto you and peace from god our father and from the lord jesus christ verse three blessed be god and father of our lord jesus christ who had blessed us with what spiritual blessings where spiritual blessings in heavenly places he said according as he has chosen us in him before the foundations of the world so you have been chosen that means your life listen the bible says those he predestinated those he called he justified he glorified you are not just an accident you have been planned are you listening to me something happened on the way by but by the wisdom of the spirit there was a plan of redemption to bridge the gap now god wants us to continue what would have happened if man did not fall if man did not fall what will we be doing i hope you know if man did not fall there will no there will not be apostles and prophets and teachers and pastors they came because of the fall their ministry will end one day when will it end when the saints come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of christ so those who say there are no apostles again there are no prophets there's no need arguing ask yourself has the church come to the fullness of the stature of the measure of christ if not then the ministry of apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors is still valid hallelujah the apostles break the ground they build the people they equip the people the evangelists by the anointing of the holy spirit bring people from the fold of darkness the pastor the word pastor is shepherd and that is not even a teaching title that is an administrative title the word pastor is the word father so they father the people they help them they build them a pastor is not just a preacher are you listening to me and then there are the prophets they reveal the oracles they reveal the blueprint and they give direction so the apostles receive the signals from the prophets what is god saying and they are the ones that have the faith and the audacity to go through it agabus revealed to paul he said whoever has this girdle is going to jerusalem and he gave paul direction paul said god has already shown me but he said i will go they are the ones who plow the ground that's why he makes us stubborn before he sends us because kai the people that were sent to are not they are very stubborn people prophets are see as they can be quiet and calm but apostles are not quiet people doesn't mean you should just be stubborn and say oh this is the secret of being an apostle i will not obey my mother again <laughs> let's continue <laughs> having predestinated us into the adoption of sons by jesus christ himself according to the good pleasure why does the bible use adoption adoption means that we belong to another kingdom before when you adopt a child what do you do you take that child and engraft that child to become your own hallelujah to the praise verse 6 of the glory of his grace through which he had made us accepted in the beloved 
in whom we have redemption listen now in whom we have redemption how through his blood and the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace now look at this the bible says there were hebrews and we're talking about seated with christ we'll discuss it in brief maybe 10 minutes about the whole concept of redemption what is redemption the word redeem means to salvage to save by paying a ransom hallelujah that you salvage someone by paying a ransom i wrote a book some years ago not guilty never released it but it was a, an attempt to explain to man his present position in light of what christ has done now there was a contention you when you read the book of romans that's where it contrasts between the law and grace down into galatians and colossians and then ephesians it seems that paul had a controversy because the jews and the gentiles had an issue watch this the jews were god's covenant nation the gentiles every time i use the word gentile it means whoever was not a jew real jew from nation of israel so we we are called what gentiles are you listening to me those who are separated from the commonwealth of israel now the jews were a people who entered a covenant i hope you know that they entered a covenant with god sealed by what circumcision are you listening to me it was a covenant with god because they needed to be a separate people with whom the messiah would show up now the gentile nation they were hidden nations they did not love god they served other gods when jesus christ came listen remember that when he was sending the 12 and the 70 he told them do not go any other place go to the lost ship of israel are you listening to me now because he wanted the jews because the jews had paid so much price for jesus christ to come so the bible says a worker is worthy of his wages and he will be the first partaker are you listening to me so the jews were to be the first partaker or uh, the partakers of salvation but they rejected christ and then the blessing came to the gentiles that's why till today those in israel if you've gone to israel for pilgrimage those who are leading the people and driving the cars they are not even born again they don't believe in the messiah they just know that they have a historical monument that is making money for them hallelujah and so here was the problem the jews were saying we are better than every other nation why because we are a covenant people we are circumcised and we are a covenant people now the gentiles were far this is what the jews were saying this is why they rejected the gospel of paul paul was saying for all have sinned what is all have sinned jews you have broken all the commandments they've given you gentiles you did not even have you were you fell from adam that's why i said by one man sin entered the whole world are you listening to me now the jews were contending they said no for anyone to receive of the blessings of salvation he must become a jew by circumcision then from a jew he will now become a partaker of god's blessing and paul was saying no he said it's not necessary that the only circumcision that was required was the circumcision of the heart hmm, help us god so we have redemption through his blood our redemption listen to me the word redeem means to bring somebody back to an original state by paying the price are you listening to me according to god's eternal justice the bible says in ezekiel chapter 18 it says the soul that sinneth it shall die the soul that sinneth it shall die so according to the verdict of god's justice when man fell he was judged is that correct in the days of noah the bible makes us to understand that men be began to do things that displeased god and he judged the earth with a flood and then there were eight people noah his wife the three sons and their wives why because eight is the prophetic number for new beginning so god was beginning a new race now god knew that he would not need to keep killing people and wiping one generation after another then they had a plan and that plan was jesus christ are you listening to me now so the prophets came to guide the people to guide the people in the way of the lord until the manifestation of jesus christ when jesus showed up he showed up as the one john said the one who sent me told me that the one on whom i see the holy spirit descend he is the lamb of god and when he saw him he said behold the lamb of god so everything that happened in the old testament was a foreshadow a foreshadow are you listening to me so jesus comes and walks upon the earth jesus came for two reasons and none of them is to take you to heaven listen to me hallelujah the first reason jesus came was the ministry of reconciliation to reconcile us to the father do you know why we are going to heaven one day <laughs> look at me 
do you know why we are going to heaven one day because satan must be judged and the prophecies that have been written they are called the written judgment they must be executed upon the earth and the bible says let that him that let it will let that means it is the church who are the light of the world that are withholding the manifestation of the antichrist the antichrist cannot manifest when the church is here because light shines in the darkness so don't let anybody fool you with all of, yes the government of anti of the antichrist is already being formed are you listening to me but the antichrist cannot show up until the church leaves the holy spirit will need to give way for that manifestation so who are those who will be the missionaries the jews when they see the exit of the church truly they will know that they have been misled because they are waiting for the manifestation of the son he came in a manger and they said according to their prophecies he's supposed to come with great chariots and horses and so they are waiting for the manifestation the coming of jesus the <laughs> what we well Will I call it second coming? The second phase of the exit. For those of you who have been taught that there is nothing called rapture, change your mind. There is something called rapture. There is no word rapture in the Bible. Just like there's no word trinity in the Bible. Every time you see a word that is used that you cannot find in the Bible, you search for scriptures to confirm it. Are you listening to me? Like trinity. Jesus comes out of the water. The Father is speaking. The Holy Ghost comes in bodily form. You see the manifestation of trinity. But that's not enough because two scriptures must confirm it. Then we see Stephen. Stephen is full of the Holy Ghost. Looks up to heaven and sees the Father sitting and the Son standing at his right hand. Now we know that there is something called trinity. So rapture. The Bible tells us in the book of Thessalonians and, and many other scriptures how that there will be a time when there will be a glorious exit of the body. Why? So that the vials according to revelation will be poured upon the earth. Are you listening to me? We are the ones who are withholding wickedness. Do you know I've not even touched on Ephesians. We're just doing general Bible study. Well, wherever we can stop, we'll soon stop and then pray. But are you learning something? The word of God is supposed to make you grounded. The end of this this is part one in part one we are supposed to learn who we are in christ on account of what christ has done say after me because of what christ has done, christ has done. i am alive today, today. oh dear lord okay let's see how far we can go because paul began to pray paul was praying a prayer to the efficient church that they will see what he saw he prayed in verse in verse 17 he says i pray that i bow my knees for this cause i bow my knees to the father of our lord jesus christ that he may grant unto you what the spirit of knowledge wisdom and understanding in the knowledge of him your heart being flooded with light that you may know certain things he says that you may know the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saints and the exceeding greatness of his power and all of that which he wrought in christ and he said now christ is seated in the heavens okay let's let's wherever oh lord wherever we can stop let's start from where should we start from the holy communion let's just take it from there i have to at least cover some grounds the holy communion what is the holy communion what is the revelation of the holy communion now look up please by this time it was evident that man had fallen and the only remedy is christ because the, without the shedding of blood there is what no remission of sin and any soul that sinned it shall die is that correct now man sinned i hope you know that the concept of sin listen sin is first a nature before an act are you listening to me so when you see someone fornicating or doing something the sin is not really the fornication the fornication is the effect of that nature in the person the strength of that nature in him because the bible says for instance it says uh, second corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 he said he who knew no sin became sin did jesus sleep with any woman did he steal any man's property but the bible says he became sin so what is the bible saying he who knew no sin became the embodiment of sin so that we might become the righteousness of god in christ jesus so when man fell he took on that fallen nature that nature of satan man lost his dominion man lost the holy spirit man lost righteousness and all through from genesis chapter 4 down to the manifestation of the sun it was just a transition a, a, a temporary transition awaiting the coming of christ so at the holy communion now jesus had told them he was going to die watch this please 
he sits with 12 people because 12 is the number of government is that correct and what does a government do they represent the people are you listening to me so jesus christ was entering a covenant with the whole world through 12 people using them as a prophetic point of contact so that he could now die for them are you listening to me because there had to be a way for substitution to happen and for substitution to happen christ would have to take on the nature of man in death so that would now take up his nature in life are you understanding me and that's what the holy communion jesus said except you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood you do not have my life are you listening to me now he had said he's the bread of life and he is the cup the living waters so he took of the bread and broke it and gave the 12 people the moment they ate it there was a legal grounds in the spirit where christ can now take the nature of man that's why after the communion he went straight to gethsemane what was he doing in gethsemane he was crying no he was not crying that's where what we call the exchange began to happen the substitutionary sacrifice of christ are you listening to me him becoming seen for us that we might become the righteousness of god in christ this is what paul is trying to explain if you do not understand what christ has done you will not know who you are you see why it says we are seated with christ sitting symbolizes rest is that correct so everything as far as your redemption is concerned you did not do anything it was christ that did everything so if you try to do what christ has already done it will be futile you just need to embrace what christ has done and walk in the reality of it are you listening to me now when jesus was at gethsemane listen you know why jesus cried and said father if it be thy will please take this cup off me what cup was it the cup of death on the cross no 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 the cup of separation for the first time the trinity were going to be separated the holy spirit who came upon jesus christ like any man at baptism would have to leave him so that he can die are you listening to me <laughs> the holy spirit came back after three days and resurrected him back again from the dead meaning he left him when the bible says he gave up the ghost he gave up his spirit not the holy ghost the holy spirit left him that was the only condition for him to pay the price that he was paying so that cup was the cup of separation because listen it was in gethsemane jesus began to become the adam i hope you know that on the cross he didn't start dying there he finished his death on the cross the death started in gethsemane because adam first died spiritually is that correct and then he died physically so if jesus were to qualify and meet the condition of being the second adam he will have to die spiritually first and what is spiritual death separation from the holy ghost so the holy ghost left him in gethsemane and then they held him watch this from that time he did not become jesus the christ there was no more christ in him christ comes from the word christos the anointed one and his anointing he was no longer the christ he was jesus sin me and you the embodiment of every sinner are you listening to me now he began to pay the price that me and you would have paid so let's have jesus here there's something very lovely the catholics do sam you are jesus they remember during lent period they get a jesus and move him around now watch this man fell every king has a crown on his head is that correct your crown is the symbol of your royalty so man when we fell we lost that symbol of royalty so a crown of thorn was put upon his head in substitution for the restoration of our royalty are you listening to me that's why a crown of thorn was put everything that happened to jesus from gethsemane was the substitution and so they took him he was naked why because the first adam lost the glory and he was naked i hope you know that all the covering you see around jesus was just for social reasons he was naked now when they took him this is what isaiah saw he said who has believed our report to whom has the arm of the lord been revealed he saw jesus battered the same jesus that he said unto us a child is born unto us a son is given now isaiah in his prophecy he was seeing in a vision and he saw jesus disfigured he said he was bruised beyond recognition he said by whose stripes we are healed watch this so jesus christ was taken and the roman whip this is how they flog people sam put your hand here watch this so that there's no hope of touching it it's not the way they flog people now 
and when it was a way of torturing criminals are you listening to me the roman whip had about 10 compartments and at the tip of it they used bottles and nails it was a way to torture criminals so that they'll confess when they flog you with that cane you say there's no hope of lying let me just tell the truth there's 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 no hope of lying it's, it's not wisdom now i want you to understand i'm teaching you the substance this is what paul saw by revelation because he was not there when this was happening are you following me now and they flogged him every time they flogged you the cane will wrap around you and hook to your flesh so when they pull it out part of your flesh will fall that's why they, that's how they beat jesus now isaiah was seeing this and he said this was in exchange in exchange to restore you to health because the soul that sins it shall die are you listening to me now when christ was suffering you were in him are you listening to me why because we took up the communion together so now whatever he's going through in the realm of the spirit we were this is what you would have gone through for your own sins but christ said let me show you love he said you just step by i will do everything for you whatever the result is i will get it so when somebody tells you ladies when he say if not you enter well tell him just love me like jesus that's all i want <laughs> and you will see whether i can truly love like jesus do you know what jesus went through we were going to die and jesus said no you can't go through this he told the whole world he said stand come into me by covenant and let me suffer for you so that everything i'm doing you see that so satan did not know when jesus gave himself satan was out to destroy the seed of the woman because there was prophecy that the seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent so when jesus gave himself satan was happy and he said crucify him he did not know that there was a covenant paying the price for the whole world are you getting it now so he was happy when they were beating jesus and the life of the flesh is in the blood when man was created from the beginning there was no blood when jesus christ resurrected there was no blood and it is that bloodless life that he gave you follow me listen 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 i want to shock you i know many of you say, ah, don't deceive us okay hallelujah now jesus was beaten when he was beaten they spat on him they did everything the bible says in galatians chapter 3 christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law who are the us gentiles being made what how did he redeem us by becoming the cause according to jewish culture every man who carries a tree you know it was a tree that fell man from the beginning so christ had to now carry that tree are you listening to me it was from the foot of the tree that man solidified his fall now he lifted it to golgotha golgotha is called the place of the skull that was where adam it was where adam died the skull the place of golgotha golgotha means the place of the skull the exact same place he was going there to be the second adam are you listening to me now when he took off the cross he became the curse so that in him i was carrying my cross too are you listening to me and then while he was going to that cross he encountered a man called simon simeon of cyrene you know who simeon of cyrene is he was a black man this is why i tell you africa and the black race participated in the substitutionary work of christ that's why there is a glory that africa will reveal before christ comes yes it's prophetic when christ was suffering the bible says that who will partake of the sufferings of christ and the glory that follows so that simon was a black man it's not today they started belittling the black race and so they said carry the cross now the african continent in one man participated and helped jesus christ helped him and took that cross and he took him to the cross watch this now jesus is in the cross there are two thieves whatever they stole they are on one side and another side and jesus is here are you listening to me now he stretched his hands listen the death on the cross was the worst form of death they will call everybody in the city to come and look at you jesus was hung naked a 33 year old man the only clothing on him was the blood watch this and he stood on that cross and when they nailed him his hands and his feet 
blood was already flowing listen the moment the blood touched the earth it gave room for the atonement of our sins are you listening to me because man was made from the earth when that blood touched the earth when he hung upon that cross it was a substitution it was him conquering the tree and the power of the nature of satan are you listening to me and he hung there on that cross and then they pierced his side and blood and water came out meaning he died of a ruptured heart jesus hung there and while he looked at the he looked at everybody the father had turned against him because the father turns against every sinner now jesus had become a sinner and when he looked to heaven he didn't see the father looking at him again and he said eloi eloi lamak tabak sanai he said how will you turn your face now jesus had become you and me are you listening to me the holy spirit was not there to help him no angel was there to help him he was alone on that cross and then he gave up the ghost guess what happened when he gave up the ghost he had died there was joy in hell why because the seed of the woman who was prophesied that would bruise the head of the serpent and restore man had now died but they did not know that except a corn falls to the ground and dies this was a prophetic mystery it was the secret of reproduction so jesus sowed himself in upon the earth when they were burying him it was that seed that seed of abraham that will be sown upon the earth and suddenly he appeared in hell they just saw jesus christ appearing in hell and satan said what a mean why did he go to hell because when sinners die they go to hell jesus died a sinner he couldn't have gone to heaven he went to the hell that we were all supposed to go to that means there is no need for anybody today to go to hell again because he has tasted death once for every man are you getting blessed we'll soon round up and now when he went to hell the bible says that all of the cohorts of hell were on him remember that all satan wanted was to be acknowledged as one above god now christ came as the express image and satan told him if you would just bow down to me i will give you the whole world jesus never said it's a lie you don't have the whole world because as at that time satan was the, he held the keys that he collected from adam are you listening to me he held the keys and so jesus went that was the key that held your destiny your life your breakthrough your healing for the entire race you couldn't have done it by yourself and so jesus said don't worry i'll go and do it for you now when he stepped all the demons were upon him because satan said you must bow to me by force he said everyone in hell bows to me and now jesus shows up and says satan you will bow to me you get the word that was happening here that's why the bible says he made a public show of them what drama was going on in hell follow me and when he the legal claims of justice i've explained to you the concept of justice if somebody steals in your house and you take the person to court what happened if they tell the person give him 30 lashes as they are lashing the person the the pain of that person is consoling you are you listening to me is that correct that's how because man offended the father it was the punishment of man that would appease him and jesus became that one so for every time they were oppressed there was a measure of justice that would appease the father's heart that's why nobody protected jesus until the legal claims of justice was full and he said all right the father's heart is appeased and jesus got up and made a public show the bible says you know what he made make a public show have you watched wrestling where the other party didn't even punch the person once that's what happened and then he went to satan watch this when he went to satan he said give me the keys which keys of joshua selman's life and destiny in the book of revelation he said i am he that was dead but now i'm alive and i hold the keys you see that when he said that watch this in him every one of us stretch our hands by covenant and said let me have my own too and that of my father and my mother and my brother this is what paul saw by revelation now he collected the keys follow me now psalm 24 when he when he had the keys no don't open we're out of time when he got the keys he was about to go out and suddenly there was a clarion call lift up your heads and be ye lifted oh ye ancient doors hold hold on 
those gates were living they were not dead those were the gates of hell he said i will build my church and the gates of hell those gates were the gates of hell because no man listen until that time ever was permitted to go condemned as a sinner and then come back again into the world to come and redeem men but here was this man he came and there was an announcement from heaven lift your head in other words gates open up somebody is about to leave hell and come back again and the gates ask a question they said who is this king of glory look at the words king of the glory that man left and then he said who is this king of glory and the voice said the lord why did he give him the attributes of a warrior he just conquered satan he said the lord strong and mighty and the gates asked again lift up your he said lift up your heads oh ye gates and be ye lifted oh ye ancient they had swallowed people nimrod ahas different people followed that gate and he said there is a king that entered and wants to ride back said, who is this king he said the lord of hosts is his name suddenly the gates opened and jesus stepped in and the holy ghost hmm. because all this happened in the realm of the spirit on the third day suddenly the father said angels you can go and michael came and rolled the stone and sat and said let me see the person who will come and roll it back and the holy ghost came listen that's the work of the holy ghost now listen the physical body of jesus had been decaying there are you listening but when the holy ghost came because listen jesus the spirit body of jesus was now alive and now they needed a quickening if that same spirit that did whatever he did to that body now lives in you he said the exact same way he turned a mummy and removed every biological decomposition that same spirit and he came upon that body suddenly jesus was comfortable to enter his body when he entered his body he got up and he stepped out when he stepped out he stepped out in glory and the, the, the disciples were hiding and he stepped in watch this he the moment he resurrected he started manifesting the character of spirit beings walked through a wall and he said all hail hmm. in other words job done when when mary saw him she wanted to touch him she said rabboni he said no don't touch me you will corrupt this thing i have not yet ascended to my father why because he would according to hebrews he would need to be the high priest remember that when he talks about atoning the word atone means to cover now in the jewish culture the, you need to atone for the sins of the people using a lamb that was one year old and it was spotless now jesus became the lamb the problem is or the the advantage is that he doesn't have age so the age of the lamb determines the validity of the atonement now jesus became the lamb and poured the blood from that ageless lamb and he became the high priest again and carried the blood took it to the heavenly tabernacle poured it once upon the mercy seat and said all right priest and everybody your error ends we don't need you again suddenly he was able to step down and he said guys all hail he says all authority listen philippians chapter 2 happened before he came back that was where the coronation service happened immediately it was not when jesus left in the book of acts no he had become lord and then he came and said all hail all authority in heaven and on earth has now been given unto me he said you now go in that authority are you ex are you are you following me now so how does this apply to you now watch this the moment sam comes out for altar call watch this please and you confess the lordship of jesus over your life and you believe in his substitutionary work not just that he died for you but that you died in him say i died in him i was wounded in him i paid the price in him the moment you make that decision what happens this rope remember our good old rope again the very righteousness of jesus even if you were a drunkard right there with alcohol in your stomach listen you look exactly like jesus before the father and now jesus takes you as the mediator and says father 
behold and the father said i cannot see a sinner all i'm seeing is somebody as exact as you we are now partakers of his divine nature this is your present day reality in christ now demons listen when you catch this revelation and you activate it the realm of the spirit will receive the signal that you know who you are are you listening to me and the seal of the blood is upon you and the proof that the deal was done is he sends the holy spirit to come into you whereby you cry abba father now you can call god my father you're not just a stranger somewhere are you listening to me now the holy ghost comes what happens when he comes you are blood washed you are redeemed if jesus christ comes are you going to go to heaven yes you will why the proof that you go to heaven is that you have the holy spirit any man that does not have the holy spirit in him cannot go to heaven hmm. are you listening to me now what you call eternal life look at me eternal life is not life after death eternal life is the presence of the holy spirit in a man he is the life of god the one who brings eternal life to you and then you are sealed with the blood so you have been an armed robber you have been a cheat you have been whatever you are this is why a lot of people cannot understand the message of righteousness because it looks like it's unfair how can you say i've been a, i've killed people i've done all kinds of things the moment i come to christ with a broken heart suddenly i become the righteousness of god in christ and he looks at you listen to what god says he says not guilty let me shock you do you know what not guilty means not guilty means you did not commit any sin come on god come on god when we say guilty but pardoned it means you fell are you listening to me and somebody has bailed you but now god says you are not guilty not guilty means whoever was on the cross was the person who committed that sin and now we see christ on the cross and he looks at you and says you are free lord i'm free i killed people i drank alcohol i did all kinds of things he says whatever you are saying i cannot see you again there is an eclipse of the blood between me and you and anything seen through the blood is holy that's why the holy spirit the spirit of holiness comes upon you so say i'm the righteousness of god now look at this now this guy is born again watch this sam is born again but he finds himself walking in a path that is ungodly assuming he finds himself fornicating again and this guy loves god he's born again he's praying in tongues and he finds himself what happened the bible says i write these things to you that ye sin not he said but if ye sin ye have an advocate with the father even jesus the righteous this is the hope of the believers listen to me that you are the righteousness of god and listen listen please i need you to get this when a believer falls or a believer commits acts of sin what happens has the person lost his salvation no no there are two conditions to lose salvation one is that you practice the sin of rebellion what is rebellion willful perpetual continual breaking of the laws of christ consciously if i'm here now and i'm preaching and i know i'm going to go and drink tomorrow i know it's wrong i plan it it's in my mind that's rebellion rebellion shifts you out of the covering of gra the grace of god and outside of his grace what you see is judgment are you listening to me so god is not some perfect god who is waiting and the moment i look at this person and i'm angry and i just slap him, hey, hey, hey hell no if that's the condition nobody will go to heaven not even me look at the way i shout at you all the time and then i'm talking of going to heaven this is the revelation of a guilt-free life now watch this a lot of believers have carried this and said ah so if whatever i do so long as my conscience is clear and i can open up my heart and be repentant before god it means that i'm free that means i can go and sleep around with every lady in the world and suddenly just go to god and say lord you won't happen again please forgive me paul said shall we continue in sin that grace may abound but you see you're not going to stop when you preach and tell people stop sinning stop this if they could do it they will not do it in the first place there is an ability that you need to tap into are you listening to me it's called the redemptive grace of god so i've been bought with a price satan cannot look at me and remind me of my yesterday therefore if any man therefore if any sinner if any smoker 
if any malpractice practitioner be in Christ what happens he is oh, it doesn't matter what happened in the past say my past is past say it my past is past so that somebody does not come and tell you when you were four years old Sam your mother kept money at the back of this you carried it if you are in Christ you are a new creation say I'm a new creation say I'm a new creation so why do you still feed on the word of God when you are a new creation you feed on the word of God because now you need to renew your mind receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your souls you will need to renew your mind and come into the experiential reality of what Christ has done watch this that's why you can see people say I am in Christ and I am a new creation but what you see in their life you still see curses you still see curses you see them suffering the things that they are saying I am free from because it's not just confession alone are you listening to me confession must also follow an activation walking in the truth and walking in the reality of the word this is why we are teaching you the word otherwise there will be no need we can just stop and say there's no need to come to church again you are in Christ go and you will suffer and as if Christ did not die for you so we begin to teach you the principles and you begin to receive this the Bible says we are seated in Christ say I'm, I'm seated with Christ I have been crucified with Christ I have been crucified with Christ rise up on your feet say I've been crucified with Christ my past is past I'm a new creation in Christ I love the Lord the nature of sin is broken in my life guilt is broken in my life now look at me please let guilt end in your life right now there are many of you who have done things every time God wants to use you Satan reminds you every time he reminds you of your few of your past remind him of his future hallelujah we have been called we have been redeemed I no longer belong to Satan I'm not going to hell this is what it, there are many of you who are born again but you don't have what we call the assurance of salvation say I'm heaven bound because I'm in Christ I'm confident of my position far above principalities far above powers and the Bible says listen he said as he is right now so are we in his life as he is who is he a king so I'm a king the life that flows in him not when he walked upon the earth his present day reality I have the divine nature a life immune to sickness a life immune to failure that's why the Bible says though the righteous fall seven times there is a nature that cannot leave him there he will surely rise again lift up your voice and pray say I'm seated with Christ seated with Christ I'm seated with Christ